I'm eagerly awaiting the arrival of an annual fish migration and a new Sony camera, the Sony a7S III. I'm hoping the two show up at the same time so I can capture some incredible footage to share with all of you. But since the actual fish haven't shown up yet, a lot of the birds have been forced into this little tide pool and they've been doing some amazing stuff. And I can't wait to show you. Come on, let's go. It's 30 minutes before sunrise and dozens of birds are eager to get an early start on the day by scooping up some fresh fish. A great egret holds its prized catch proudly on display and the fish's frantic effort to escape draws the attention of even more egrets who eagerly come in for a closer look. The soft orange glow of a nearby dock light shimmers on the surface of the water as another great egret is nice enough to let its catch just casually swim right down its throat. An osprey flies in to take a closer look at all of the action and something grabs its attention. It pulls its wings in and increases its speed as the wind rushes past its feathers. The osprey's dive becoming a unique balance of wind resistance and speed thrusts its razor sharp talons out and crashes feet first into the shallow water, sending water flying high into the air. The bird rises and shakes the stinging salt water from its eyes. Its high speed dive yields nothing but wet feathers. Meanwhile, a gull comes in and plucks a fish from the water, almost crashing into an egret on its way out. And not to be outdone by the gull, a more experienced osprey has zeroed in on a target hiding in the rocks below. Its descent is a much more calculated, graceful approach as it slowly comes in and sinks its talons into something just below the water's surface. The osprey makes an adjustment and it yanks a fish from the water, skipping the fish across the surface the entire way. Back over by the egrets, and a large predatory game fish has chased some smaller bait fish onto the rocks. The egret, knowing a good meal when it sees it, grabs the stranded fish, and another one quickly takes its place, and for a moment it's safe, but it flips back into the water as the game fish continue their feeding frenzy. The osprey have now focused their attention on another section of the tide pool as one lightly skims the surface of the water with its talons, but its half-hearted attempt yields nothing but that doesn't stop the bird from coming in once again, and this time the osprey comes in from the other direction. It slows its descent, reaches its talons out for the catch, and once again misses. But another osprey has been successful in wrangling an unsuspecting fish from the water. Its powerful 1.5 meter wingspan, giving it the strength to clear the shallows below and slowly rise into the sky, while one set of talons securely holds the fish perfectly in place. Notice how the fish's body is positioned perfectly to create less drag as the osprey gives the fish one last look at its watery home below. This bird, a gorgeous female, makes the whole concept of diving talon first into the water, grabbing a fish, and flying away seem like the simplest task in the world. It also gives new meaning to the term flying fish as the bird heads out for a place to eat its well-deserved meal. That massive ball of brilliant fire in the sky slowly rises and it starts to filter through a large cloud mass on the horizon. A lone snowy egret welcomes the magical warm light that comes with it. And dozens of birds have started to gather in mass as the sky starts to fill with amazing color. A great start to the morning. The rising sun tells this black crowned night heron that its nocturnal feeding session is over as it stretches its wings and leaves the tide pool to the egrets who are thoroughly enjoying a nice plentiful bounty of fish. The early morning light creates a nice warm hue and an amazing palette of color on this egret who has a mouthful of fish. Check out its nictitating membrane partly covering its eye, caught it in the middle of a blink. You can see the tip of the bird's tongue sticking out of its beak and check out the tightly woven strands of feathers on its face. Simply beautiful. This grand catch makes the egret population double as the feeding frenzy continues in the early morning hours. A single great blue heron stretches its wings and appears to dance ever so gracefully in the shallow water. This bird has been watching the local reddish egret who is currently a little preoccupied staring at the underside of its wing. Hmm, I guess everything checked out there. And it isn't long until this magnificent creature pulls a fish from the water. But what kind of fish is that? Thankfully, the reddish egret was nice enough to stop and toss the fish in the air so we could get a better look. And speaking of look, this fish is referred to as a look down fish. But I think this fish should have been looking up because things are now looking down for this odd looking fish. Whoa, that was kind of a tongue twister. 
All jokes aside, one little look down fish isn't going to be enough to feed this hungry reddish egret, so it ever so gracefully dances its way back into the shallow waters where it stops to investigate a strange but very photogenic water droplet. That water droplet turns out to be a medium-sized, nice, tasty fish. Reddish egret will often play with their catch before swallowing it whole, and if you position yourself in the right place, use a fast shutter speed, and have a little patience, you can capture some simply amazing moments that happen far too quickly for us to comprehend. And if you're lucky enough to catch this beautiful bird while it's resting, you can capture incredible portraits where high-resolution cameras like the Sony a7R 4 give us a peek into a different world we simply can't see with our naked eyes. Look at how the feathers on this bird's neck and head come together, creating these amazing symmetrical spikes that appear to be perfectly painted in place with just the right amount of contrast to give depth to those feathers. And then you have that little bit of fluff stuck to the end of the bird's beak. Back over with the egrets, and there is quite a commotion going on. One of the egrets has managed to capture a large needlefish, and it looks like this bird has a fish hook in its neck. Ouch! Unfortunately, this is all too common in this area. The needlefish gets its name from its long, slender, needle-like body and the rows of tiny needle-sharp teeth that fill its entire mouth. The egret isn't too worried about those teeth as it grabs the fish by the top jaw and slings it into the air in an attempt to rearrange the fish in its beak. The bird's first few attempts are unsuccessful, but these unsuccessful attempts provide the perfect opportunity for some amazing photographs. And once the bird gets the fish head first, this gull flies in and photobombs the shot. Our great blue heron, it still thinks it's center stage on Broadway as it continues to dance in the shallow water. And it looks like there might be a bully in the crowd. Ouch. Rosé Spoonbill in the back is acting a little on the aggressive side as it chases the other Spoonbill off the exposed sandy flats. But the Spoonbill isn't the largest bird on the sandbar and its aggressive show of force hasn't gone unnoticed. A massive wood stork slowly walks onto the scene. Its posture is enough to tell the Spoonbill that it's time to back off and if the Spoonbill pushes its luck, well, then there are two more huge wood storks slowly coming in from the back. The Spoonbill, seeing a small gap in the line of storks, decides to sneak behind the wood stork. But the massive wood stork in the lead doesn't miss a beat. It claps its beak at the Spoonbill, and then it pushes out its feathers, showing the Spoonbill who's boss of the muddy flats. With all of that posturing going on, you would think a fight was about to break out, but it looks like the birds actually worked things out. Let's take a closer look at these storks. Ah, so many interesting things about this bird, and I love it when they soak up the sun like this. Definitely not a bashful bird, but check out those pink feet. Wild looking, and notice that chalky gray color all over the bird's legs? That would be bird poop or guano. These birds actually poop on their legs in order to regulate temperature. When the temps get a little high, yep, they just go to the bathroom on themselves to keep themselves cool. Whatever works, I guess. And check out those green feathers too. The longer black feathers on a stork's wings will turn a wild iridescent green in the right light. And then of course, you can't miss that gnarly looking head that looks as if it was made from wood. And that's a good indication of age. This is a mature adult. Here is a younger wood stork. Notice how the beak has some nice color and it's all smooth. And the bird still has a lot of smaller feathers on its head too. And here's a good comparison. Older wood stork on the left. Remember when you were young and you still had a nice head full of feathers? Younger wood stork on the right. Meet your future self. Sorry buddy, but this is what you grow into. I'm sure there are plenty of other wood storks that will find you attractive. Some smaller birds have come into the tide pool. This is a ruddy turnstone, and it gets its name from, well, yep, turning over stones in search of food. Let's take a closer look. These are tiny little shorebirds, and they love scooting around the exposed muddy flats looking for food. And because they have such a low profile, it's best to get down really low when you're photographing them. They're cute, but I really want to catch one flying into land just like this. And because they're so small, their little wings move extremely fast. If you want to freeze their movement, you'll have to bump up your shutter speed quite a bit, especially if they're flying in really close. The closer they are, the faster they're going to be moving across the plane of your camera's sensor, 
the faster your shutter speed will need to be to freeze those tiny little wings. In these shots, my shutter speed was 1 6400th of a second, and it worked like a charm. Another thing you'll notice about the ruddy turnstones that frequent this area are most of them are missing portions of their feet. This one's left foot is missing a few toes. These are mostly caused by discarded fishing line and fishing nets. And this one is missing its entire foot. This shot really speaks volumes about the problems these tiny birds go through. But even though this bird is missing its entire left foot, it still manages to enjoy its time in the tide pool. On the other side of the tide pool, thousands of tiny fish have moved in looking for a safe place to spend the morning. But huge schools of tiny fish always seem to attract bigger birds like this brown pelican and the brown pelican's best friend, the always popular gull. If this duo could talk, I would imagine the gull is saying, hey, what you got? What is it? Can I have it? Is it mine? Yes, it's mine, all mine. Meanwhile, the young brown pelican, it just wants to enjoy its pouch full of fish. Either way, these interactions make for some awesome photography moment. This young brown pelican looks a little more surprised. <laughs> Look at its big bulging eyes. And the gull, it quite obviously just doesn't really care. It just wants the pelican to drop at least one tiny fish. Please, oh please, just give me one. And where there are little fish, there are always bigger fish. And when there are bigger fish, osprey like to come in for a closer look. This one comes in for a landing on the beach. Not something I see them do all that often. It takes to the air and then it comes in a little closer. And once again, the osprey just gracefully comes in nice and slow, giving us an excellent look at those big meaty legs and its razor sharp talons. Notice how the bird's talons are still closed. It really had no intentions on grabbing a fish here. And then in full on stealth mode, another osprey crashes into the water on my left. I turn and grab focus on the bird as it rises out of the water with a huge Atlantic manhaden clutched tightly in his talons. The bird's experience has taught it that using both sets of talons ensures it never loses its prized catch as it comes flying right by me. The bird eyes me cautiously as the fish's tail skips along the surface of the water. Don't worry, bird. I don't want your fish. I just want to take your picture and share it with the world so everyone can see just how incredible you are. Wow, what an amazing experience at the tide pool. All of those fish have been seeking the safety of that little tide pool, but it turns out it wasn't such a safe place. All the birds know that they're all there and made for some incredible photography moments. Did you have a favorite? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to click the thumbs up and share this video, that's really helpful. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that too. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below too, and I'll put them together in a new question and answer video. And until next time, I'll see you later.